Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the disk allocation window in Pro Tools and talking about common reasons why files can sometimes go missing when you either move a session from one system to another or even just one drive to another. Now most of you are probably aware of the fact that in general audio files for any given session are stored within the audio files folder for that particular session, it makes sense. But there are several other things to consider when importing and recording audio into a session. Before we even look at the disk allocation window itself, I want to mention a setting which I like to keep on at all times. I'm just going to open this session to show you this. You'll find this in the preferences under the processing tab, and uh, it's this one, automatically copy files on import. When this is checked, any audio that you import by drag and drop will always be copied into the session's audio files folder. Without this checked, any file of a compatible format, either WAV or AIFF, which also matches the session's sample rate, will be referenced from its original location. So let's see this in action. I'm just going to create a couple more tracks in this session. So let's create, say, two new stereo tracks. OK. And first of all, I'm going to drag and drop with that preference active. Let's just double check that. So automatically copy files and import is on. Now I'm just going to import. Uh, say this file, okay. This actually is the same sample rate as the session, but it would make no difference anyway because with that preference active, so you can see that's called Bad Love Final Mix. Now, if I go into the audio files folder because I have the preference active, sort them by date modified, you can see Bad Love Final Mix is in there, so it hasn't referenced it, it's actually copied it in. Go back into the same preferences and deactivate automatically copy files on import. Now I'll copy another file in which is also of the same sample rate as the session. Let's just find this. That one will do. Drag that one in. You'll notice that that came in immediately because it didn't have to copy anything. Let's just double check in the audio files folder and uh, it won't be there because it's referencing it from its original location. It's worth mentioning that if you bring audio into the session via the import audio command from the file menu or the shortcut shift command I, then you'll notice when I choose something here, we have the option, once again, if it matches the session sample rate, of either adding it to the session, so when I click that, it will reference it from its original location, or we can copy it. And with copy, of course, that duplicates it into the audio files folder. Of course, if the audio you're trying to import into the session is at a different sample rate to that of the session, or if it's in a format which needs conversion, such as an MP3 like we've got here, then you'll notice that the add option is greyed out because it requires conversion on import. So now let's move on to the disk allocation window. You'll find this under the setup menu, disk allocation. And under most circumstances, you won't normally need to mess around with this, but it can be useful to change certain settings on occasions and it's definitely worth understanding. So you can see that we have a list of tracks on the left hand side and in the right hand column we've got the root media folder. This is the location for the audio files on each of the tracks and for this session you can see that it's all set to the same place, basically the audio files folder on the hard drive where the session's located. If I was working on a session and for whatever reason I wanted any subsequently recorded audio for a given track to be recorded to another drive, I could for example, click on this column and change the location for that track. So audio four, let's change that to this drive. Audio two, I'll keep in that location. And now what we'll do is let's make a recording onto each of these. So I'm just gonna mute everything else and then We'll record something. It doesn't really matter what the input is, just for the sake of it. I'll keep it as it is, actually. So I'll just record a few seconds onto both of these tracks. Remember they're called Audio 2 and Audio 4. And now, let's take a look at where they're located. So this is the Audio Files folder again for the session. Audio 2 has recorded to here, because, let's just double check this, in the uh, disk allocation, Audio 2 was left set to there, but Audio 4 you can see there's no sign of it here because I changed it to this other hard drive. And on that drive now, we've got a folder which takes on the name of this session. So I called this session disk allocation. This has been automatically created for me. And within it is the audio file, which I've just recorded. So now I suppose the question is, 
when and why would you use this? And potential uses for this could be either splitting the workload of recorded audio between two or more drives by allocating different tracks to different drives. So for example, you could say I want to record this one to that drive and this one to that drive and, and so on. You know, you can customize it on a track by track basis. Or maybe if you're mid-session and you realize that your hard drive is almost full and you really push for time, you don't have time to move stuff, then potentially you could change some of these so that any subsequent stuff you record from that point onwards goes to that new location. And I mentioned the word subsequently recorded because anything that's already recorded is going to stay where it is. This in no way moves files around. It's just if you change it, then you make a recording, the new content will be at that new location, but any previously recorded audio from that track will still be wherever it was to begin with. Okay, so let's click OK. Now I'll just create a few new tracks. So maybe I'll create four mono audio tracks. And I'll put the name in, new track. And with this name dialog, um, if you create multiple tracks and just put one name in, then it will assign them numerically. So we'll end up with new track one, two, three, and four, like that. Just going back into the disk allocation window then, you'll notice that those tracks I've just created have defaulted to the original location. And you know, if you did want everything from a certain point onwards to end up being recorded into a new location, this would be quite annoying to have to create the track, go back in here, change the location. And there's a solution to that and it comes in the form of custom allocation options. So let's just check this, which then makes this uh, available. And I can choose a location. I'll just put this on the desktop, I think. That'll do. And what this does is, again, it doesn't affect any of these tracks. However, any tracks I create from now on, those new ones will default to that location which I set in custom allocation options. So in short, Anything you set here affects existing tracks, but only stuff you record on those tracks from that point onwards. The custom allocation options will apply to all newly created tracks from that point onwards. There are a couple of other options in this window. The first of which is create subfolders for audio, video, and fade files. So currently this is active and I'll just click OK. And if we take a look at the desktop, which I've just set as a location for these new tracks, you can see it's created this bounced files folder. There's nothing in it. But if I make a recording onto some of these tracks, let's just record a few seconds onto these. Okay, and then take a look at it. You will see now not only have we got that, but we've also got an audio files folder. So in essence, in every location which you set as a destination for recorded content, you'll get a file structure similar to that of any Pro Tools session. What I should probably have done is put it on the desktop within a folder, otherwise you end up with files all over the place with no containing folder. Um, let's just go back once more into the disk allocation and we'll finally talk about use round robin allocation for new tracks. This has been in Pro Tools for many, many years, and I'd consider it to be a bit of a legacy feature, really. If you check this, it will spread newly recorded content across all viable record drives. What I mean by this is, if you've got, say, three drives designated as record drives in the workspace, so let's just take a look at that. You can see I've got different drives on this computer. Uh, three of them are assigned as record drives. So with those three record drives, if, for example, I were to create a session with 18 tracks in it and record to all of them, broadly, you'd end up with six tracks worth of content on one drive, six tracks on another, and the final six on another. I recommend not doing this because the potential to misplace files when moving sessions is quite considerable. This brings me back to the point about file organization. If you've been changing all of these settings for whatever reason, or if you have imported audio files by either adding them in the import audio window or dragging and dropping them without the automatically copy files on import option selected, you'll end up with the files associated with your session being in numerous locations, which can obviously be a problem for several reasons. The biggest of which is the fact that if you decide to move the session, so say for example, I'd done that and then I go to the session folder and I drag this onto another drive, well, it's obvious what's going to happen here. It's going to copy anything that's already in the audio files folder but if I've got stuff on three or four or however many other drives, they're not going to be part of that because I'm literally just dragging what's in that folder. That's a problem because you get to another location, whether that's 
a different computer or a different studio and as soon as you open the session the missing files dialog comes up before you do that if you're ever unsure about where things are located in your session go to the clip list let's just expand this out a little bit and uh, if you go to the little triangle up here and choose show you can show the full path which is basically the disk location and you can see here some of these files are located on this one terabyte ssd some of them are on this other drive some of them are on the macintosh hard disk and, and it's going to be a mess so if i were to just copy one folder several files would not be there and we would be missing files when we try to open it on a different system so the best way around this is to use the save copy in command that you'll find under the file menu and what this lets you do is several things really but the basic thing i want to mention here is it will let you create a copy of the session you can copy the audio files and if you had for example video files in your session you could copy those as well and irrespective of where they currently are as long as pro tools at the time of saving it knows where they are it will create a duplicate session and all of the audio files video files etc will then be self-contained in a nice new location where you know that everything's in that particular folder just while we've got this window open it's probably worth mentioning a couple of other things that you can do here um, if you ever needed to you can change it from WAV to AIFF or the other way around um, really there's no point I would just recommend working in broadcast WAV format because it's the best file format in terms of supporting the most metadata so generally stick with that you can also at this point change the sample rate if you need to so this session was recorded at 96k if I wanted to create a version at 48 kilohertz I could do that quite easily and also you can change the bit depth just a brief note on this if you reduce the bit depth Pro Tools will automatically apply a type of dither to it have a look at one of my other videos about Pro Tools bit depth and dither for more information on that finally the format can be changed to earlier session formats so at the moment we're on ptx which is the file extension for all current Pro Tools sessions since version 10 but if you do ever need to open the session on a system with an earlier version of Pro Tools, then you can save it in one of those versions. Okay, so I know that disk allocation isn't perhaps one of the most exciting topics, but it is very important to understand because I've seen a lot of people move sessions only to find that they've got missing files. So if you understand how the disk allocation options work and how Pro Tools copies or doesn't copy files, then it's going to potentially save you a lot of headaches. Well, that's it for now. I hope you found this video useful. I'll see you again soon.